Sealed Games. I totally forgot that we had this bin. I gotta pull this down. What's going on YouTube? How you doing? Dave here. I'm at my storage unit today. As you can see behind me, this is not the store. This is where we store the extra games and consoles. I am here today because I'm planning and preparing for the outdoor sale that we're going to be having in a few or maybe many months. I'll be talking about that shortly. This is it in all its glory. All the extra games that we have pretty much organized by different system. And then at the top, a lot of miscellaneous stuff just sitting all up around there. And honestly, I kind of want to take stock today, see what I have, and then what I can bring to the next sale. Let's get to it. Let's start looking. Let's see what I have in the unit. At the top here, these are all the bins that we have that have like different controllers in them. Bunch of miscellaneous bins up there. And oh, look at that. Something else is peeking out from here. Oh boy. You know, it's funny. I always talk about not having a guitar hero set or guitar or rock band sets and maybe we have some here so i'll have to check that out i remember these from the last sale these are pretty much all the miscellaneous stuff that's like a buck a piece so like you know third party controllers a lot of third party cables just a whole host of miscellaneous stuff but like let's be honest here what we're most excited about why we're here all the games and man if you guys watched my last tour of the storage unit you know i don't recall if there were more or less but you can tell Joe and I are busy right now. We're just like shoving everything in there, except for the Xbox. That's the one section that I did recently, and you can kind of see how nicely organized it is. PS3 overflowing, which is awesome, because that means I'll be going through grabbing a bunch of PS3 for the outdoor sale. I was actually here last week, and I did a bit of work on the 360 section, which looked pretty much exactly like this, just games everywhere. And I organized it, like basically try to just keep one row, maybe max two games, unless it's like a really popular game. So basically what we do is sort of organize the console shelves in the unit, take everything out, and then we price it accordingly. So if I have a game where I have like 10 copies of a game, doesn't sell that well in the store, I'm pricing that way down. If I only have a couple of copies of a game, I might keep both of them in here. But let's say it's a really slow selling game in the store. I may also bring it to the outdoor sale. I'll discount it. Everyone's happy. You guys are happy. I'm happy. You know, GameCube is another one of those sort of systems where we have a decent amount of restock, but not a ton of stuff. And it's always the same games that we get in. Like, you know, Metroid Prime, anyone. A lot of copies there, obviously. And don't get me wrong. I'm super happy to have extra copies of games. GameCube kind of sells in waves. We'll get a bunch of clients coming to the store in their 20s and they want their GameCube. So definitely does sell, but it sells sort of in waves. I mentioned this a few vlogs ago, all the copies of Wind Waker that I have. And guys, I have a lot more. I'm going to dig up the old copies I had from the last outdoor sale. Okay, so I found the bin with the GameCube games. They were actually like, you can kind of see like the Zelda games at the end here, W, whatever, and then it's done. So there's another bin sort of down here that's got the rest of the GameCube games but this is from the outdoor sale and if you watch that last outdoor sale you'll recall that Joe said it was not a good idea to put four copies of a game out right he was like put two out and you know that's that's going to be better to sell right you shouldn't put four and Joe was right hey Joe so what are you most impressed about right now the fact that you have three copies of some games and four copies of Wind Waker yeah totally so Okay, so I think we're gonna sell. I, I think we're gonna sell four copies today. Okay, yeah. let's see. I, so, we have to leave all four out, so, though. Joe, honestly, so, thinking, do you think we're gonna sell four? I don't. Okay. But, so what I would do, yeah, is I would do this, yeah. to create some FOMO. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good idea. I think I'm gonna be discounting these a little bit more to help move them, because we have so many. So this is pretty much it for GameCube. Nothing too crazy in here, but. Like I said, we'll pull off a bunch of these games and discount them for the outdoor sale. So Super Nintendo, looks like we have a lot, but when you get a little bit closer, you'll kind of see that a lot of the games that we have in here, sort of the same, you know, there's some Mario Paint there, the NHL games, Mario Paint again, <laughs> Mario World, 
you know, not a lot of copies of games, but the truth is the Super Nintendo section in our storage unit kind of always looks like this. Luckily, we don't run out of like high selling games like Donkey Kong Country. That game sells really, really well. You know, down here we have a few more. I mean, I'll be honest with you guys, great carts like Super Nintendo, we always need them, always buying these. So in terms of pulling games from the Super Nintendo for the outdoor sale, I definitely will be, but I won't be able to grab as many as I have, perhaps at our last sale. PS1, tons of PS1, and I'm pretty sure that half of them here are Final Fantasy games. You go close up here, it's Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy and The Legend of Dragoon. And there's Joe's NM. No manual. Also got a lot of copies of Parasite Eve. There's another Dragoon. You know, so we'll definitely discount some of these here. The Mighty NES. It's not crazy packed right now. And it'll be interesting to see what I'm able to pull from here for the next outdoor sale. You know, if I have one copy of a game like 1943, you know, I mean, obviously I'm going to keep it here. I, you'll probably see, see these stickers here. So these were actually in our outdoor sale bin from last year. And then we started getting low. And so I put them back in here and then I'll, you know, I'll remove the sale sticker and put them back in the store. Yeah, a lot of normal stuff in here. There aren't too many crazy expensive games. Although there is a copy of Lolo 2 and we actually sold one last week, which is pretty cool. I do think this game's actually gone down. So I'm probably going to have to reprice that. I should mention anytime I do a restock, I reprice everything. I think I mentioned this in the last video. So sometimes you're going to see that some of these games actually don't have price stickers on them. And, you know, we got to price things accordingly. The NES doesn't fluctuate too much. So it typically stays the same for us. But yeah, this Lolo game, I'm pretty sure it's around $60 now. So I'm probably going to price it accordingly. But yeah, a lot of NES that I, I definitely can bring to the outdoor sale. You know, some Double Dragon games there, for example. Golf. Oh yeah, who wants to watch Mario Golfing? Who remembers playing golf on the NES? Nobody. Moving over to the PS2. We have a very healthy PS2 section, guys. It's looking really good in here and really good in this store as well. And so what that means is that I'll be able to bring a lot of PS2 to the next outdoor sale. A lot of really good games in here. Super, super awesome. Final Fantasy, anyone? Man, they made a lot of copies of those games. <laughs> There's another copy of Jet Jam for the uh, PS2. We sold a copy a couple of weeks ago. So here's all of our PS2. I mean, you know, obviously the Guitar Heroes don't sell crazy well. An interesting little story, when Joe and I bought the store from the previous owners about seven years ago, he had PS2 games stacked up. And one of the kind of games that he was giving us at the time or selling to us were multiple and I mean like dozens and dozens and dozens of copies of the Guitar Hero and Rock Band games. Now this is Peter's old game. It's got his blue sticker on there, 495 plus tax. He owns a retail store in Belleville. So he sort of just brought the games from his Belleville store to the store in Stittsville. And so he kept his old stickers on them. We include the tax in our prices. So that's why it just says $5 right there. Also, pretty sure this is not a $5 game anymore. It's probably a $10 or $15 game. But I'm telling you this story because we have so many games that we're still trying to sell from Peter seven years on. Like, it is insane, you know? So it kind of goes to show, right? Like, when you're buying your inventory, you got to be very careful. So definitely multiple copies of games that I'll be able to discount once we're at the outdoor sale. Pretty happy about that. A lot of good games in here, you know, and we're always like still looking for certain copies. We're always short. The Wii U and Wii. A lot of good games in here. A lot of good overstock. Mario Galaxy, anyone? <laughs> oh my God. I didn't realize we had that many. So yeah, definitely going to be grabbing some of those for the outdoor sale. People love them. New Super Mario Brothers Wii. We actually only have like three copies here, a couple more at the store. So I'm not going to say we're running low on it, but that game sells really well. So always need more copies of that. We Fit. Oh dear God, We Fit. Check it out, by the way. We Fits, anyone? I dare say I need to take a trip to the Sally Ann and drop them off. We Sports Resort. So we have tons of copies of this game right now. Not selling like it used to. And we're getting tons of copies traded in. Which is good, right? That is like a top 10 game on the system. 
definitely hands down. Yeah, we fit. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of games we can discount for the Wii as well. Moving over here. So Xbox, I already did this section uh, a little while ago. So it's pretty much here. This is what we have for Overstock. And I'm actually going to be pulling Overstock today as well. And going to be taking like, you know, our last copy of Halo 2. I remember when we used to have dozens of that game. And it sells pretty well for us now. 3DS and DS. A lot of 3DS titles in here that I'm definitely going to be discounting at the next sale. You can see a lot of them right there. And then probably a few in here as well. I'm okay to keep like four or five copies of a game, but always good to sell a few at a discount. PS3. Man, this section is just packed. This will be a good section to go through. PS3 has been selling really well in the store. It's getting very popular. Along with the 360, the PS3, man, it's just like doing really well. And at the time of filming, I heard that there's a new show, there's a new Fallout show. And we sold like, I want to say like six Fallout games last Sunday for different systems. And I think people are into their Fallout right now. So yeah, I'm going to have to grab those and put those in the store as well. All right, so for N64, it's not looking terrible right now, but, you know, I got to be honest with you, it's it's lower than it should be. It's lower than we'd like it to be. I mean, yeah, we have lots of copies of GoldenEye, but, you know, realistically, this game isn't selling anymore, and it's really, really not selling. And it's a great game, but, you know, a lot of people just aren't buying it. And, guys, this is all we have for our restock for N64. So I know it looks like a lot, but unfortunately, it's not as much as I would like to have. Like the, the Star Wars games back here, they used to be like way up to here. And they just keep going down and down. And, you know, we need more obscure N64. We need more of the commons. I'm always saying it, but we're always buying N64. One of the hardest carts to get in. I'm looking at the top here and like, I like don't remember. Like, obviously, these are some pads in there. I saw this sticking out and I'm pretty sure there's some kind of drum set in there. But while I was looking at those, I noticed this. I noticed three bins here that, to be honest, I haven't really been looking at every time I come in here. This one's case only. And I remember making this many years ago and it's just like a bunch of empty cases that we have. This one here is broken games. So a lot of games, like we've sort of kept them in there in case we ever decide to buy like, you know, a really good resurfacer. But my eyes are looking at this one here sealed games i totally forgot that we had this bin i gotta pull this down okay guys i think i know what's in here but i can't be totally sure moment of truth let's check it out let's see what's in this case here oh my god i totally forgot about this Oh man, Joe and I got this in a collection like three years ago, maybe something like that. So Zelda Oracle of Ages sealed. And I remember we got this and we really didn't know what to do with it at the time. So we're like, let's put it in our unit. And this is at the time when like sealed games were just going way up. So I think, I think Joe and I joked when we put these, this in here, we're like, this will be our retirement, you know, savings one day. Now, look, I don't, you know, sealed or not like whatever whatever you collect that's totally cool but like this is a an authentic sealed copy of zelda oracle of ages and i mean you know in terms of seals like the seal is it's pretty much mint and i remember we got this from a guy he had a giant collection of like you know obviously there was a lot of game boy games nes super nintendo and this was in there and yeah i we didn't know what to do with it at the time because i'm like do i send it off and get it graded and obviously you want to do that because you'll, you know, you get more money for it, but you know, to send one item off to wait six months. So I don't know, I may actually put this in the store and you know, <laughs> I don't even know what it goes for now. Like I'm going to look this up obviously after the video, but, uh, yeah. Wow. A sealed copy. That's pretty cool. That's a surprise. Uh, there's other games too. <laughs> there's a Pokemon Omega Ruby sealed and Alpha Sapphire sealed. And then, Oh, Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, your shape. Oh my god. Jenny McCarty. Oh. Also sealed. Check it out. Authentic seal. Okay, I'm totally going to put these two things in the store. 
I'm going to, I'm going to like post, I'm going to be like sealed games going in the store. Now this is interesting, right? Cause like, if you're like a complete set, Wii collector of which I don't know many, uh, that would be interesting. First of all, this box, I've never seen it before. And I remember getting this as well. And we're like, okay, we should just save it. And I bet you it's not worth anything, but, uh, really interesting. This one, however, whoa, just, just going to put this, you know, sealed game back in its case okay guys so you probably noticed that there are bins in the middle here as well right and basically all of these bins are holding games from our last sale and so these are all the nes games that didn't sell at our last outdoor sale underneath i have you know kind of another half bin of stuff that didn't sell and i'm gonna look at this and basically i might price games a little bit lower uh, truthfully, I may grab a few games that I think we don't actually have in the store anymore. We'll see, but typically most of the stuff just gets priced lower. The bins down here are, for the most part, Wii and Wii U. And if I could just lift that up there, there's the GameCube. And we these are pretty much all Wii down here. All right, so there's the Wii that I was telling you guys about. A lot of copies of, uh, you know, Mario Kart 8. So down here, we have a lot of GameCube that didn't sell at our last sale that I'm definitely going to be pricing. Maybe lower, we'll see. I mean, tell me why Tales of Symphonia doesn't sell, please. Nobody wants that game. Every game that has Tales in it somehow sells, but not that one. And then under this, a lot of Wii there. A lot more Wii here. And we and the last one's also we and down here I'm pretty sure this is all ps3 so this is ps3 that didn't sell at our last sale that looks like ps3 as well and that's also ps3 so a lot of ps3 here and a lot over there which means guys we're gonna have a lot of ps3 at our next sale so right here the reason this is a little bit lower than that side is because it had the Xbox 360 that I actually took home with me uh, last week so a lot of the 360 is already at my house and I got to work on that as well. Over here, we got some PS2. I don't know what this is. Oh, there's some DS that we didn't sell, you know, one of Joe's favorite games, High School Musical. High School Musical 2, work this out. Joe, you be you, buddy. No one's judging you. And, oh, PS2 down here as well. Oh yeah, these are all PS2 and those are also PS2 over there. And obviously some Genesis. Anyone looking to play some primetime football? Is that Deion Sanders? Oh, yeah. All right, guys. So that's what I have here. This is the stuff that I have to, you know, remove, cull, organize, price. Got to bring it home. Got to put it in the bins. Got to alphabetize it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I wanted to give you guys like a bit of a sneak peek at what we're going to be doing for our next sale. Speaking of which, I got to talk about that. All right, guys, so here's the truth about our next outdoor sale. If you watched our last video, you saw that I basically said we're not going to be doing one this spring. We've done one every spring for, I want to say, the last five years, with the exception of the COVID year. And the reason why is because Joe and Crystal had a new baby. Obviously, congratulations, Joe. If you haven't congratulated him already in the comments down below, his little boy is uh, two weeks old at this point, you know, and he also has like, you know, an almost three-year-old at home. And anyone that has kids or knows someone with kids knows that that completely interrupts your life, uh, especially a newborn, uh, your sleep is just destroyed. So that's Joe's life right now. He's knee deep in babies. We can't do an outdoor sale. And some of you might be thinking, well, like, why don't you just grab what you have here? You just go and bring it. I could do it maybe with me, Steph and Frank, right? And that is a possibility, but here's the thing. I got to go through the entire unit. I got to, like I said, I got to price it all. I have to organize it all. I have to decide what I'm selling and how much of it. And really the pricing is the big thing, right? Because you want to price it at a price point where I don't have to keep bringing it back here. The goal is to not have any more stuff here because every year we get more and more collections and every collection has like two sort of sections. Actually, it has kind of like three sections, right? Let's say you're buying like 100 games from someone, 100 PS2 games, right? You're going to have like, you know, 10 rare games. Those are going to sell very slowly. They stay in the store. Then you're going to have like maybe 50 to 60, you know, good games that are going to sell, you know, a little bit faster. You're going to have like 30, maybe 40 games that typically don't sell at all or need to sell at a heavy discount. And that's a lot of the stuff that we sell out here, except we often 
do get a lot of that middle group as well and we sell that middle group as well outside i'm i'm trying to like explain it as a store owner here right because i don't just want to take my stock here and heavily reduce it and then just sell it that's that's not the point the point for us is to have a store that is very well stocked for people that come in every single sunday uh, we want that store to be packed with consoles controllers with childhood favorites as many rare games and obscure games as we can. That is our goal from week to week to week. We want the store to be organized. We want it to be clean. We don't want to have too many copies of a game, which is why we do restock, you know, pretty much on a weekly basis at the most every two weeks. So you're not going to see like, you know, you know, five copies of uh, God of War for the PS2. You're going to see two copies in the store, right? And a lot of copies, we only keep one in the store. So the goal is always to have the store looking the way it is to serve everyone that comes to the store. That's the goal. The outdoor sale, the purpose of the outdoor sale, I mean, obviously as a retailer, we're looking to make money, yes, but a lot of the stuff we sell outside, we're selling at a heavy discount, oftentimes what we paid for the item, or we're just making like a little bit of the money back. We do that because... To get those big collections, those hundred PS2 games, you, you can't just say, "Hey, I'll take the, I'll take these," because the person selling them is like, "Well, no, I, I want to get rid of all of them." So you take the whole thing, and that bottom part, those common games or those games that are cheaper that a lot of people don't want, those go to the outdoor sale. We sell them at a heavy discount. So basically, as a store owner, you got to take it all. You can't cherry pick. Nobody, nobody wants people to cherry pick. Nobody likes it when people do that. And we take everything in. We, when we give our offer, most of the money is going to go to those like top, you know, 80%. And then the bottom, not a lot. But that's okay because we sell that out here. And the people selling, they are happy to get rid of it. The other thing with the outdoor sales, they are, uh, they are a thank you to the people that come to our store on a regular basis. They come, they support the store, they choose our store, they choose local we have people that trade exclusively with us and we appreciate you. We love you for that. You know, we know you're coming to our store. We have people that come only to the outdoor sale like twice a year when we do them. And that's cool. Like we have people that come and they'll drop like three or 400 bucks on games. They're good for the rest of the year. And we do this as a thank you, right? We don't really do like a lot of other sales. We don't do a lot of anniversary sales. We don't really do Black Friday sales. We just do these outdoor sales and like honestly we've had a lot of people asking about them lately which kind of prompted me to want to do this video i know some people are waiting for it and you know i know this news is also disappointing to people because they obviously want us to do the sale our next outdoor sale we're projecting it's going to be in september which is typically when we do our second outdoor sale i mean there's a small chance we might be able to do one in the summer but right now i don't know I don't think so. I think it's going to most likely be in September and I hate to disappoint. It's just the way it is. You know, uh, we, you know, we, we have, uh, we have families, we have lives outside of the store. So we have to prioritize that. We are still going to do a sale though. And when we do that sale, it's going to be boom. One thing I actually forgot to mention while I was doing my walk around, this is only the stuff we have here. Joe and I both have tons of stuff at home, especially Joe, cause he's got a bigger house than I do. So Joe has like, I think he has like 20, I want to say like 20 of these kind of like crates at home full of games. That's more stuff that's just going to go to the outdoor sale. All right, guys. So thanks for sticking with me on that. I hope that answered your questions. If you have any questions about the outdoor sale or how this all works, I would love to answer them. I always like answering questions from the perspective of a store owner. Um, hey, we're a part-time store. We're open Sundays only. I've been doing this for seven years with Joe. Actually, we've been doing this for more like nine to 10 years because we used to do shows. And I find this aspect of the business interesting. And if you have questions about this uh, aspect of the business, like by all means, ask away. I am totally cool with it. So yeah, thanks for listening. All right, guys, I'm done here. I just finished up getting all the restock. Nothing too crazy in there, but that's all the stuff that kind of sold over the last couple of weeks. Doesn't look like a lot. The problem is that we didn't sell a lot of games that we had a lot of doubles of. So like, I think we sold like 15 NES games last two weeks. I had like six of them here in overstock. So 
you know, for those really good games, obscure games, we don't have a lot of copies. They're not selling super well. So when we go to do the restock, not a lot there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit different. So let me know truthfully what you think down in the comments and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.